So myelofibrosis is a form of blood cancer. And uh, in the uh, universe of blood cancers, uh, it is classified under myeloid disorders as opposed to lymphoid disorders. And the myeloid disorders themselves are then subdivided into acute myeloid leukemia and chronic myeloid disorders. And myelofibrosis is within the chronic myeloid disorders. Other examples of chronic myeloid disorders are, for example, chronic myelogenous leukemia, polycythemia vera, essential thrombocythemia, myelodysplastic syndrome, and so forth. If you want further subclassification within the chronic myeloid disorders, the myelofibrosis would be classified under myeloproliferative neoplasms. This disease um, has a worse prognosis than other myeloproliferative neoplasms. Number one, uh, it has a significantly shorter survival. The average survival for patients with myelofibrosis is around six years. The average survival, for example, for its sister diseases such as essential thrombocythemia or polycythemia vera is about 20 years. So number one, it has shortened survival. And then number two, and equally important for the patient, is quality of life is significantly compromised in myelofibrosis because of three things. One is anemia, significant anemia that often ends in requiring transfusions for the patients. So transfusion-dependent anemia is one of the major causes of morbidity for this patient. The second is marked splenomegaly. Most of these patients have very enlarged spleen, which fills up their stomach so they can't eat as well, and also uh, make them uh, have profound constitutional symptoms such as night sweats and cachexia, they lose weight, and so forth. So there is shortened survival and there is significant quality of life issues. And the quality of life issues, as I said, are anemia and big spleen associated with constitutional symptoms. Therefore, a good treatment would be, number one, if it can improve survival. But short of that, if it can improve anemia or improve the spleen, control the spleen size and the constitutional symptoms, it is equally important for the patients. Traditionally, in myelofibrosis, the management of anemia have used drugs such as erythropoiesis stimulating agents, uh, androgen preparations, uh, and so forth, and, and they don't work very well, and those drugs usually end up making the spleen even larger. So there is a dire need for effective drugs, especially in alleviating anemia. Uh, so we started exploring the use of immunomodulatory drugs, and the first one we actually tried was thalidomide very early. We pioneered the use of thalidomide in this disease and found out that as a single agent in about 15 percent, one five, uh, it helped anemia and also helped control the spleen and equally about 20 percent of patients. Then after that, the second generation immunomodulatory drugs came, and those include lenalidomide and pomalidomide. Lenalidomide is now FDA approved, pomalidomide isn't. We used lenalidomide uh, for this disease after the thalidomide story, and again, we found about 20% response rate. Now, the thalidomide, given over a long period of time, can cause peripheral neuropathy, so that's an issue. Lenalidomide causes myelosuppression. Sometimes it causes uh, profound degrees of low white count and low platelet count. So we were always on the lookout for a better immunomodulatory drug that does not have this toxicity and perhaps even be better in alleviating anemia. That's how we decided to test pomalidomide, and we tested it in a multi-center international study, and we tested it by itself. Uh, and in a parallel cohort of patients, we also tested it with combination with prednisone at a high and low dose of pomalidomide. And we controlled the whole thing with patients taking prednisone alone so that at least we uh, understand uh, the toxicity profiles better. So that was the just and the design of the study. We were um, 
very impressed by the preliminary results that we have. Uh, the first thing we found is that this drug uh, was very well tolerated. Uh, we did not see the degree of myelosuppression, uh, the degree of neutropenia and thrombocytopenia we saw with the lenalidomide. We have not seen any peripheral neuropathy yet. Patients, for the most part, tolerated this drug very well. Uh, very few side effects. Uh, so, at least from that standpoint, we are happy. Now, from the standpoint of results, we were also pleasantly surprised uh, that uh, uh, there was an overall response rate uh, that is well in the range of a third of the patients that took pomalidomide, either by itself or in combination with prednisone, have actually responded to the drug. Uh, and <coughs> this is actually uh, taking every one who came and who was randomized to take the drug. And most patients don't usually end up taking on, I wouldn't say most, but some patients don't end up the drug uh, for a long period uh, to make them evaluable for response. Some of them withdraw from the study for one reason or another. Uh, and since there were not major adverse events here that could be attributed to the drug, most of the withdrawals is either patients were at the later stage of their disease, so they were progressing, so they didn't have time to, uh, to benefit from the drug. But so if you took patients who had managed to take the drug for at least for three months, the response rate with the drug alone was almost 40%. And the response rate, a lower dose of the drug, uh, which is 0 0.5 milligrams, with a short course of prednisone, which is given only for the first three months in a tapering schedule, was also about 40%. So we are happy about the preliminary result. Obviously, we need to reproduce this in a larger group of patients. Uh, and we were you know, very uh, delighted at least to have an active agent. And it's interesting that we also have uh, some clue as to who the drug benefits. It appears that those patients who don't have a big spleen or a very high white count are the ones who benefit the best. So if you have myelofibrosis and you don't have leukocytosis or marked splenomegaly, uh, then you have a very good chance of responding to the drug. But the response is only for anemia. Uh, one thing that we have noticed is that it does not affect the spleen one way or the other. So the key message is that there is now another drug uh, that is very well tolerated. Uh, and has the potential to help at least a third of patients with uh, anemia and myelofibrosis. That's great.